Hey, what's up? It's your boy Quick Draw coming at you with some more Quick Draw garbage. Now today's video is going to be all about introducing you to using the editor in OS for the first time. OS. OSU. OSU? US. I don't know. But yeah, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you the basics of how to use the Osomania editor. Now, it is only the basics, I'm not going to be going into anything too complicated because it's an endless pit of information. But after watching this video, you should be able to make your very first beat map and get someone to test it without them vomiting all over their keyboard. So let's give it a shot. Alright, so since this is a tutorial on making your first ever beat map, I'm going to start from the very beginning. So the first step is to go into this editor tab, and that's where we make beat maps for any of the modes which OS supports. Now, as it says here, you have to drag an MP3 file in here to start mapping. So first of all, go and grab the MP3 file of the Camellia Marathon that you want to make, or whatever other song you want to make. And um, just for me, it's this song that I've made for this tutorial. It can be anything though, as long as it's an MP3 file. So we just drag that into OS, and voila, this is going to be our beat map. All right, so the first thing you're gonna see is this song setup screen. Now it looks like a bit daunting because there's a lot of options, but it's quite simple once you get the hang of it. First of all, the artist is obviously the artist of the song. So for me, that's myself, but you'll write the artist of, so you'll write Camellia in there when you're making your Camellia marathons. And then the title of the song. For me, that's just my first beat map. And then the difficulty. Now there are some pre-prescribed difficulty names which people generally use for OS. Um, if it's a song from Sound Voltex, you'll usually use their difficulty naming system. But in OS, we usually use either Easy, NM, HD, uh, MX. Sometimes you can say MX Plus if it's not quite of the next one, you know. SC and SHD. Those are the ones you're primarily going to see, right? So I'm going to call this 4K. HD. So I'm going to be making it at hard difficulty, and it's well, that's what I'm planning, but we can change this at any time. So if we end up having a harder map, then we can change that difficulty name. But that's where we're at so far. The source is if it's from an anime or something, so you don't have to worry about that. Tags are for the search engine on the website, so you can put stuff in here like speed core or like um, uh, weeb or whatever, whatever you want. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave those blank. So the next thing you want to do is click on the advanced tab. We can ignore this because that's just about note stacking. We won't get into that, it's too too complicated. But allowed modes, we're gonna change this to Osmania. So now the editor knows we're making an Osmania map. We always want to get rid of the countdown because we don't use that in Osmania. We want to turn on widescreen support so we can use some nice backgrounds and the such. We don't want any of these others, we can leave that as it is. Our audio, while I'm mapping, I like to have the volume and maximum. But when you actually export this map and get pe on up upload it and get people to test it, you'll want to bring this down a bit because 100% volume is really, really loud hit sounds. So this is how long, how loud the actual hit sounds are when you press notes. Um, and that can re be really overpowering if it's at 100. But while I'm mapping it, I like it to be at 100 so I can hear where the notes are when I'm, when I'm putting down the patterns. Next, we go to the difficulty tab. Our HP drain rate, it's best to keep this pretty high between 7 and 9. Um, I usually go about 8. I'm not, it's not that important to me, but it's up to you. This is how fast your HP is going to be drained when people miss notes in this map. Key count, anywhere from 1 to 9. This is a 4 key map. As I said, I'm going to plan on making it a 4 key map, so I can drag it onto this 4. Or if it was a 7 key map, for example, I could drag it to the 7, but we're going to be mapping 4K for, uh, 4 key for this um, tutorial. Approach rate, as you can see, we can't touch that because there is no approach rate in Osmania. Next is the overall difficulty. So this is um, kind of how hard it is to hit the notes accurately. So the higher this is, the harder it's going to be to hit notes accurately. And the easier it is, the easier it's going to be to hit notes accurately. So I usually like to have it between 7 and 9 since it's hard difficulty. I'm going to keep that at a 7. And we're done with the song setup now. We can just click OK. And then ask if we want to save, click OK again. Alright, so the next step is of course timing our beat map. We can't start placing patterns until we have it timed properly. Now, the two most important things to know about when you're timing a beat map is the offset and the BPM. So offset is where in the song we start counting it from, so where in the actual MP3 file the song starts. And the BPM is how many beats per minute or how fast the song actually is, the tempo of the song. Now, um, I've actually got a dedicated video for how to time a beat map. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. So I'll go over it quickly now, but if you want a more detailed explanation, I recommend watching that. Alright, so basically we click on this timing setup paddle button. 
In here, I'm going to click on the timing points tab, press the green plus sign. It's inserted a, time, a blank timing point, so I'll click OK on that. Now I'm going to listen in the music at 25% speed. Remember, if we have playback rate down here, and we can do this at any time when we're using the editor, we can change the playback rate to be at these speeds, so we're listening to the song and watching the map at that speed. It really helps for laying patterns on complicated music and finding the right timing for notes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to listen for where the song starts, and that's where I'm going to put the offset. So let's have a listen. There it is. Around about here. So since my cursor's here already, I'm going to say use current time. I might put this up about 9, but we'll see. See, that's way too early, so let's try a bit further forward. So we've got the right offset there. If you hear the, the little metronome tick, will be at the exact same time that the music starts. Yep. But then our first bar line should be hitting around there, but it's not. So that means our BPM is too slow. So let's try putting it up um, 20 for now. That looks perfect, actually. Alright, but it's, it feels too slow, doesn't it? It's, it's the right timing, but it feels too slow because of how fast the music is and how high-paced it is. Because of this, I'm going to change this to 280, which is technically the same amount. It, you know, it's, it's still going to be in time, but it's going to have twice as many beats for us to work with. That sounds right. So that's good. That means we can move on to placing patterns. Alright, so now we've gone through our song setup, which you can get back to by clicking up the top here. And you can see this window again and change whatever you want from earlier. Um, we've gone through our timing tab again. You can click up here and that gets to where you can place the timing point and do your offset and your BPM like we did earlier. The next tab along here, the design tab, is used for storyboards. We won't go through that today, but... Um, people quite often won't actually even use this tab to do the storyboard. They'll go straight into the actual storyboard file and type it in themselves. Um, so don't worry too much about this one. Now the Compose tab is what we're looking at next. This is where we actually put our patterns on the map. Now, this should look familiar to you because it looks just like the four columns of a four key map. Now, down the bottom here we have our progress bar. We can drag that through to wherever we want using our mouse. We can also scroll up and down with our mouse wheel to move it up and down. And that we've also got kind of a zoomed in version of that up here. And so any of our timing events and stuff, we can see them up here. So see this red line down here? That's that BPM point we put in earlier. And you can see it up on this one as well. Now in Osmania, there's of course two main types of notes. You've got your single notes. And we can place them in the field simply by clicking on circle. And then clicking wherever we want them in the song. The selection box, you can select multiple things. And you can press delete, for example, to delete them. Or you can even do copy paste, control C and control V. And the other kind of note is of course long notes or holds. So for, to place these we put them on the first square that we want them, keep holding the mouse down until we get to the square that we want the player to release them, and then that's now a long note. Now this is the start of our song, we can press space at any time to listen to where we are, so we can listen from the start of the song by pressing space now. And you'll see the notes move along um, uh, with the song, or you can move to any point in the song and play from there. So, I'll take you through my basic process when I am starting a beat map. The first thing I usually do is I listen to the song, the song to get a basic idea of where kind of the changes in the music are, and so that I'm very familiar with the whole picture of what that song is. So, luckily, I made this song myself, so I know where everything is. We've got kind of got an intro section. Now, what I do to mark sections, I hold down Control and press B. And that'll add a little bookmark down the bottom, this blue line here. And that doesn't do anything. All it does is it's just a little tool for you to know where changes in your song are. So, for example... So as we can tell, there's a change in the song here. I'm just going to hold down Control and press B to add another one of those little bookmarks. I won't bother doing it for the whole song because you get the idea now. So we're going to start by placing down some patterns. Um, I won't, of course, map the whole map because I'll just show you how the basic patterns work. The goal is to follow the music as much as possible. Now, let's say there was some confusing timing and you thought, hmm, maybe this doesn't sound quite right. So if we go...
Now see that's wrong isn't it? Not quite following the music, but why not? So I'm going to slow it down to 50% down here and listen again. It's coming in too early. And we can tell that. So if I grab select and I grab the end of a long note, I can actually drag that along to make it finish at a later time. So it should, the next note should be on that red line, and we know that now, so we can drag that up, put another red uh, another long note there. Now we can go back to 100% speed and listen to it again. And again, it's on the red line, so we'll go. Now if we ever want to move the start of a note, maybe I've accidentally placed it on the blue line there, it's a bit wrong, you can literally just grab it with that select tool and drag it wherever you want. Now as I said earlier, you can copy and paste, so if I grab all this, hold down Control and C, and then I can go up. So if I do it again here, Control paste. But of course that doesn't match the music, but as an example you can Control and paste as much as you want. If you want to flip a pattern from back to front, you can hold down Control and press H. So as you can see, everything that was on the right hand side is now on the left, it's just a complete mirror of what it was. Control J does the same thing, but vertically. So now that pattern is flipped vertically, and if you want to get them back, you can just Control J and Control H again. But I'm going to delete this section because, of course, it doesn't match the music. Now, what I'm going to go through next is just some basic rules when you're patterning the music. You want to match the music um, pr most of the time, unless you're making like a training map or a map which is a specific type of pattern for people to practice on, or you might be familiar with dump maps where you just dump a kind of a um, really tight, fast pattern for people to train on and a lot of people enjoy really, really, really fast finger work even if it doesn't match the music. Um, but if you're mapping a normal map, you want to match the music as much as possible. You also want to avoid having anything really uncomfortable like this, right? Obviously players are going to really struggle to hit that and it doesn't match the music. If, there was, if that matched the music and it was appropriate for that section, then go for it. Now a lot of the time, if you have been struggling with timing, so for example earlier on when I was changing that long note, if you really ended up not being able to find that timing, quite often it's because it's on a 1-3 timing. Because up the top right here, we can change this beat snap divisor, and as you can see in this lane, that changes where we can place notes. Now generally you won't want to go up to this one sixteenth because if you're having to go that high, you've probably got the BPM too low in the first place. But also patterns of this type are going to be much too dense for players to read, right? Now at any time you can press F5 and you can test the beat map yourself. It will be tested with your default skin, whatever skin you're using. Uh, you'll have to save it to test it though. I mean obviously I can't play that. <laughs> right, so I think it's very 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 important to test your beat maps to make sure that they are exactly what you had in mind. Right, now once you've finished all of your patterns and you're happy with your beatmap, you can go up to the top left, click File, and click Upload Beatmap. And that will upload it onto the OSU server and you'll be able to send it to your friends and get people to test it and people will be able to play it. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that until it's finished, or maybe you're halfway through the song and you want someone to test it and tell you, you know, what needs to be changed and what's good and what's not. Now a good rule of thumb, especially if you're ever going to be trying to get a uh, beatmap ranked, is you go to the file menu and click on open AI mod. Now what this is, is it tells you everything that's wrong with your beat map that it would need in order to meet the minimum requirements for being ranked. And I say minimum requirements because even if you satisfy everything in the AI mods section, you might be a long way away from having a clean map that people enjoy. But this is a good way to get an idea of what you need to change. So immediately, of course, my beat map has no background image. To put a background image on a beatmap, we do exactly the same thing as I did earlier with the MP3. You just drag the image file, it can be a JPEG or a PNG, or, um, directly into the map when you've got the map open like this, and that will add that background image to your beatmap. Um, now, one of the things it's pointing out here is a preview point. So a preview point is when you're in when you're in the menu of OS and you are scrolling through your beatmaps, what piece of the music people are going to hear first when they select that map. So for example, I generally would want it to be the most exciting, interesting part of the song. So if I go and find the main chorus... Now 
Now I would say that that's probably the most interesting part. So if we go find out where that starts, it's here. So we go up to the timing tab and then down here where it says set current position as preview point, we tick that and we can actually see that here. It's this big yellow line and you can see it here as well. It goes all the way up the top and all the way down the bottom. And that's an easy way to see where your preview point is. Now I'll give you a demonstration of what that's like in the menu. As you can see, when we selected that beat map, we could hear that section of the song. And that's really important in getting a player's attention when they're scrolling through their maps. They might go, oh, wow, hold on a minute. That sounds really interesting. That's what I feel like playing. So it's important to make it the most interesting part of the map. Now, there's a lot more to the editor. As I said earlier, it's an endless pit of information. But this should be enough knowledge for you to make your first beat map, upload it, and have people play it. I hope that's been helpful. And ask me in the comments if you want me to make a tutorial for more advanced things like... Um, key eye sections, SV changes, changing BPMs, all of that kind of jazz, let me know and I'll start endeavouring to make more tutorials if I can. So, good luck, and I hope this has been helpful.